Another thing I thought about with this problem solving 101 is we do other things when we look at problems. When you think about a problem, it's almost automatic to label it bad. There's no such thing as a good problem, right? I mean, not to the average person anyway. And then, the, you know, the step when we start to look for the, the root of the problem, you know, most of the time that means we're looking for someone or something to blame. Whether we blame ourselves or we blame someone else, we blame someone who we feel has power over us. And all that does is, is, is put us in a, a role of a victim. And if we take on a victim energy and we start thinking the thoughts of victim, we're forgetting how very powerful we are in our oneness with God. And then, in, and then his step three, develop an action plan. Well, when we try to do that without remembering the truth of who we are, what, what often ends up happening is that we look to the advice of others. We look for the experts. And as we're witnessing now, the experts are all over the board with how they would advise to a solution for a problem. And then the fourth step says execute. Well, we're really good at that. When we think we have an answer, we're willing to work hard to solve a problem. But what often ends up happening is that we work so hard, we're, we're banging our heads against a wall instead of recognizing that there's a greater method of problem solving. You know, when we go into a method of problem solving that, we might, or that um, depends on a human answer and, and it's not working, that's when we fall into that victim looking for a hero to rescue us. What if we simply allowed ourselves to not know what the solution is? For me, I think there's a real sweet spot between the unknown and the known. And we want to go into our heads right away and figure it all out. And it just doesn't work that way. So what if instead of approaching something like a problem, we could train ourselves to focus on our desired outcome? If we could ask ourselves, what do I really want? If we could turn to faith over fear. I started taking a new class a couple of weeks ago. It's called How to Lead When You Don't Know Where You're Going. I thought it was appropriate for this time. And, uh, you know, not only for what's going on in the world, but as you know, um, I'm going to be graduating and ordained in, in just over a month from now and begin a whole new journey. And I don't know what that holds. And so how could I possibly be a leader in, in with, the, with so many unknowns? And, and what's going on in the world contributing to that isn't helping much. So there's a book of, of by the same title, How to Lead When You Don't Know Where You're Going by Susan Beaumont. And in her book, she says, making great efforts to achieve or attain something is admired in our culture. Indeed, it seems a basic part of the human condition that we struggle or fight vigorously to overcome barriers that stand in our way. We struggle, we labor, we do all that can be done, even when the odds are against us and losses seem inevitable. Well, as I was reading that, we struggle, we labor, we do all that can be done. As I was reading that, my daughter Riley was in labor. This started last Sunday, a week ago. Um, her water broke and they admitted her to the hospital and she wasn't progressing as quickly as they had wanted or hoped. And so they started giving her the medication to induce labor. And they put her in a jacuzzi tub twice. I never heard of anything like that. That was kind of nice, actually. And they got her up and walking around. And, and, and they're struggling, too. She's struggling and laboring and doing all that can be done to experience natural childbirth, which was her wish. And after many, many hours, in fact, in t from Sunday into Monday, she labored and she struggled and she was determined to solve a problem. The problem is there's a baby on the inside that we want on the outside. And I couldn't help but think, what if we didn't know that a solution was possible? 
what if we hadn't had all kinds of experiences that told us birth is possible and there are other ways? And in fact, Riley did experience another way and had a cesarean section and our beautiful Rory Lee at eight pounds and nine ounces and over 21 inches long came into the world last Monday. So congratulations, Riley and Evan. And we're sorry you had to struggle in labor, but it was so worth it. Uh, we met our beautiful granddaughter through the, through the glass yesterday at their house. But what if we didn't know there was a solution? What if we didn't know that there was a way? We could become scared. We could live in fear. We could look to experts and then have conflicting messages from both sides. Beaumont says in her book that when we try to solve every perceived problem, we act like we're the Kansas peddler in Oz, hidden behind the control panel, trying to pass ourselves off as a great and powerful wizard. And I said, who's the wizard? Who really knows? Who has the solution for every problem? Took me right back to unity principle number one. There is only one power present in this universe and in my life. That power is God. That power is always good. That power is the wizard, if you will. In Romans chapter 8, um, Paul is writing to the Romans, um, and it's believed that he's imprisoned at the time. So from verses 18, 19, and 28, he says, I consider that the sufferings of this present time are not worth comparing with the glory about to be revealed to us, for the creation waits with eager longing for the revealing of the children of God. We know that all things work together for good for those who love God, who are called according to his purpose. I think we're seeing this scripture played out today. He said we wait with eager longing. And we're doing that right now, aren't we? We're definitely in a waiting period and some of us are getting very eager. But rather than seeing this as a problem to be overcome, what if we remember that sweet spot, that gentle waiting period in the unknown? Because right now, are we in this waiting, waiting for a power beyond us, a government or someone else to decide for us? Or are we choosing to trust God? In the scripture quote, Paul says, all things work together. And you know, I'm amazed by this. The coming together we're seeing during this time of crisis, the beautiful collaborations that people are doing during this time of physical separateness. Just yesterday, I watched a video that uh, my brother was a part of the production of. He's a singer, and he came together with musicians from around the world, all from their remote locations, and created a beautiful video for our time. Um, they, they remade Under Pressure, which was by Queen and David Bowie, two of my fav personal favorite artists. Um, but it was so beautifully done, and I'm just in awe of all the creativity and the passion and the collaboration that's coming about because all things do work together for good for those who love God and are called according to his purpose. And so I say, do we love God? And your answer would be, of course I love God. And then I would say, but how do you, how do you love God? How do I know that you love God? And we do that by loving ourselves, by being gentle with ourselves, by trusting ourselves through this process. And then by loving others. It's the great namaste. I, the Christ in me, sees and honors the Christ in you. Called according to his purpose, God's purpose is simple. Just as Jesus taught again and again, the purpose is to love. Love. Just love. And there you have it. Problem solved. No offense to Mr. Watanabe and his great bestseller book, his steps are a great way to be a critical thinker. I choose to be a spiritual thinker. 
I choose to trust the five basic unity principles. How about you? Let's pray. Problem solving 101, God. We turn to you with any perceived problem. Help me to know and trust. Help my faith to be strong, especially when fears of the unknown come. Help us to show love for ourselves and for all others and to see that this period of time or this perceived problem as an opportunity to grow ever closer to you. For this we pray, for we know that you always hear our prayers. We know that indeed you are with us, breathing us, beating our heart, and inspiring us with creative thoughts and energies that are enough to solve any problem. We trust you, and so we let it be. Amen. Thank you. And now, in our service, it's our time of offering. And although we're not together and the building's not open, it is a time of offering. It is a very important time for us indeed. And so we come together in this time and we hold our gifts. We know our gifts. And I'm going to give you an opportunity with a, another Karen Drucker song that I hope you'll hear the, all the way through this time. It's called I Am So Blessed. So let's take a moment to say our offering blessing together. Divine love through me blesses and multiplies all that I have all that I give, and all that I receive. Thank you, God.
blessed. I am so grateful. I am so blessed. I am so blessed. I am so blessed. I am so grateful for all that I am. I am so blessed. I am so blessed. I am so grateful. I am so blessed. I am so grateful. I am so blessed. Mm, thank you, Karen Drucker. Oops, she wants to sing another one for us. <laughs> I love her music. If you haven't heard from her before, I, I encourage you to. So before we go into our peace song and prayer for protection, let's just take a moment to recognize that we are blessed and that we are a blessing indeed. Um, as we are blessed, so we bless others. And we love our Unity East Church and we want to keep it thriving and active um, so that soon when we return to it um, it's there to welcome us with open arms so your gifts and your tithes matter and we trust and we know that they come from love and they go forth to do great things in love yeah so love is it love is the answer and it's the best problem solving tool we have the five basic unity principles are our guide and we know that to be true so i just encourage you throughout this week to pause and to remember what you know in truth that all is well and so right now uh, join hands with the person sitting near to you if you're sitting near to somebody or just stand and sing if you will um, our peace song Oh, it looks like we're going to get a little bit of a advertisement Pressure. first. <laughs> we're counting on you. To Technology. Stay I'm not a tech expert. Okay, let's join and sing the peace song. Let it begin with me. And we close with our prayer for protection. The light of God surrounds us. We are the light of God. The love of God enfolds us. We are the love of God. The power of God protects us. 
We are the power of God. The presence of God watches over us. We are the presence of God. Wherever we are, God is, and all is well. Namaste, dear ones.